All right, people, we're live on the YouTube and the Facebook. We're doing something a little different today. I'm not even wearing a jacket because we're going casual Ruben Report today. Uh, we've never done anything like this before. Uh, this is gonna be our first ever live episode of the Ruben Report. I've done live direct-to-camera stuff, played some video games, all that fun stuff. This is our first ever live interview. And uh, for those of you who haven't been playing along at home, Colin Moriarty, who I had on last Monday during YouTube week. He was our first interview on YouTube week. We, we had a great chat. I thought we were mostly gonna talk about video games. We ended up doing some serious political lifting. And I said after, I, I tweeted it out, I think that same day, I thought th this guy is gonna be a, a political star. I really believe that. And uh, a couple days later, well, uh, he tweeted something. And uh, this is 2017. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you tweet, you will automatically be destroyed. That's how pretty much how it works these days. He tweeted a little something and all hell is broken loose. So we're gonna talk it all out because a lot of strange things happened and they're, and they're so related to the themes that I talk about here every week related to free speech, related to the chilling factor of using words like racist and bigot and all of this stuff and how it stifles conversation, related to how the, the media, mainstream and online media, is failing us miserably in so many ways. So with all that said, uh, Colin Moriarty, welcome back. Thank you. To the Ruben Report. It's good to be here. I feel like I'm turning into like your Andy Richter or something <laughs> like that. Here I am again. <laughs> I, I might be your Andy Richter by the time we're done with this oh, thing. Oh, I doubt it. I doubt um, that. We have, we have so much to talk about. So, okay, yes. so first off, we're doing this live. Yep. We ha ha you came over for dinner last night. Yes. Got here uh, with Aaron, your girlfriend, about six o'clock. Uh, we were up till literally till 4 a.m. drinking whiskey and talking it out. Yep. Uh, I got about four hours sleep yeah. max. <laughs> Um, we're dragging a little bit today, but, yeah. <laughs> but I think we're going to be okay. Oh, yeah. But I mention that because the, because we talked literally all night. There is there is so much going on here, and and everything that happened with you. Um, so first, why don't we show the tweet? Okay, okay, and then and then we'll go from there. Sure. So uh, let's let's throw the tweet up so that everybody can uh, can take a look at the tweet. Okay. So that's what you did. I'm, I'm gonna let you read it yourself. Okay. Because, uh, well, let's do it in your own voice. It's, uh, it's so, well, I already know what it says. It says, yeah. ah, peace and quiet, and then hashtag a day without a woman. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. That's now, it. Now you tweeted this on International Women's yes. Day. Yes. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, that was a joke, am it I was right? A, it was a joke that would have, it was a joke that only would have worked that day too. So everyone <laughs> that was like, well, how could you say this today? I'm like, it doesn't make any sense otherwise. You know, uh, yeah, but I, I saw the, the hashtag trending and I thought it would be funny and I was laying in bed with my girlfriend and I, she, she brings it up because she's like, I had no idea when you showed me this tweet and, and we were laughing about it that it would blow up into this big thing because I remember just being like, don't you think this is funny? Yeah, so and you literally like, showed it to her. You yeah. Cl she cleared the tweet with you before you sent it out. Yeah, and uh, we were laying there, she was getting up, uh, I think I had to go to work or something and, and she was off, she works the night shift and yeah, I was just like, isn't this a funny tweet and, and showed it to her and, and she laughed and I laughed and I, I tweeted it out and I didn't really even think twice about it. I knew that it was going to annoy some people, but yeah. my assumption was that like with any other joke and any other, you know, you think there's rational people out there, I think I thought wrong. Uh, you just yeah. scroll through, you just scroll through <laughs> your feed and you see that and you're like, oh, or you groan or you laugh and then you go about your day. Yeah. Um, How quickly did you realize that uh, this was going to be an issue? It took a few hours actually, like the... Um, you know, I went, I, I tweeted it out, I saw some reactions, and people were kind of being more funny about it at the beginning, and then I went and took a shower, I went to work. Yeah. And then it was, you know, around that time that I realized that it was, it was becoming a bigger deal to people, and uh, um, I told myself immediately that I'm not taking it down, and I'm not apologizing for it, and I'm not sorry. If I apologize for it, then I'd just be lying to anyone everywhere. Anyway, so I'm, I'm not sorry. And, yeah. Uh, um, and you still stand by that not sorry. You nope, not even, joke, not even, not even, deal. I'm not even a little bit sorry about yeah. that tweet. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right, so uh, real quick, guys. Uh, so right now we've enabled Super Chat in the, uh, in the YouTube comment section. So we, we really want to hear what you guys think. So obviously Colin's Twitter has been completely out of control and message boards and all that stuff. And, you know, by my connection, mine has as well. But you can comment in uh, in YouTube on Super Chat, and that'll bump it up for other people to see. But for the last, we'll do about 45 minutes together, and then we'll do probably a half hour of just straight up Q&A from Super Chat if you want to get to us at the end, and I'll let you guys, and that way you guys can share your thoughts and things like that. Okay, so this happens now. People are talking shit. Yep. They're, they're going, oh, he hates women. Yep, I hate him so uh, much. Yeah. I, hate, I hate women so much. Yeah, I, I have two sisters and a mother and a girlfriend and and nieces and aunts and female cousins. I, I, women are just terrible. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, you realize that's going to be selectively edited. Yeah, of now. course. Yeah. Women are just terrible. Yeah. And they'll put that on. <laughs> Dash Colin Moriarty. Yeah. yeah. Now, the funny thing to me, because there's a lot here, but when we did the interview, again, it was a week and a half ago mm -hmm. or whatever, when we did the interview, you basically said, I think around halfway into the interview, one day you're going to tweet something and all hell's going to. Because we were talking about the, right. the outrage machine. Right. So you sort of saw this stupidity coming. I'm omniscient in a way. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I did see it coming. And, and because we've seen it happen to other people, we've seen other people destroyed over very menial things or really meaningless things because there's a lot of, when things like this happen, there's a lot of mean spiritedness and a lot of dogpiling. Um, and I have no problem if people are offended by the joke. And by the way, I think the joke is so mild that I actually don't really believe anyone's offended by the joke. Like, like legit offended. Yeah, people like just... I, I literally do not believe that there's a single person that read that and was like, <gasps> and aghast and lost sleep over it and right. cried in the shower and like, you know, lost their minds. They saw it and they saw an opportunity. That's what they saw. Yeah. And they took it. Uh, and that's, that's kind of my stance and will always be my stance on it. Okay, so let's talk about the part of this that is the part that I don't fully get. Okay. That, that I'm because I'm not in the video game world, right? Despite my uh, new PlayStation right. 4, thank you very much. You're friend. very welcome. Um, so then the gaming community started writing about this. Yep. Thing. Uh, I saw a site that I've never heard of before called Polygon, mm -hmm. but they seem legit. They're verified on Twitter. Yep. They wrote a piece saying that you had first been on doing right wing shows like the Rubin Report. Yes, yeah, very right, right. You're very right wing. Yeah. The guy also <laughs> then claimed that you went on my show to discuss the tweet. Yeah. Uh, you were actually on my show before the tweet. So mm -hmm. there were factually things wrong. They right. changed the title several times. They changed the subtitle, right. et cetera, et cetera. But there was a bunch of this type of shit. Right. Well, Colin Campbell not exactly known you know, for his great journalism. But yeah. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of stuff like this. And this is this was what, I, was, what I, I brought up with the opportunism. And we talked about this a little bit when I was on the show last time about what I call, or I term like equivalent free speech. The idea that like, uh, we use Trump I think as an example. You know, person X voted for Trump, I voted for Trump. Person Y doesn't like Trump, oh I, I didn't vote for Trump, I think that's a terrible thing, but it, it's, that's not the case, right? It's always, it's, it, it, it escalates to this, to this amazing level, this vitriolic level, very quickly. Yeah. When people see uh, someone wounded or that they can, they can you know, achieve an end or a goal that they've wanted to achieve for a long time. Um, some people might shrug it off, but the fact of the matter is, is I was uh, in mainstream games media, um, frankly dying games media, that yeah. I was the uh, only staunch conservative or libertarian voice there and have long had people not like me specifically because of specific views or certain views I've had. And so if someone else tweeted this out, this would have been nothing. It might have been, uh, maybe some people would have, you know, uh, scolded them a little bit in the corner, but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have solicited this particular outrage. Um, I think that's as clear as day, and that's the most unfortunate part about it. It is a total political retribution. Yeah, so we were kind of discussing this privately, that what do you do in that case? Because I've seen a lot of this. I, I see it now <clears throat> happening to me, and I've seen it happen with plenty of people like Sam Harris and many others, where you put yourself out there, then people change what your words are, accuse you of certain things, they do it in written form or in podcasts mm -hmm. or whatever else, and then it suddenly is incumbent on you to defend yourself, and then all you end up doing is driving traffic to those things. Right. So that stupid Polygon thing came out. Again, a site I had never heard of before, and some writer who has no traction that I can tell whatsoever, yeah. and, and I don't even care about him, but then there's a moment where I'm like, wait a minute, I have to correct this now, and then you could spend all day doing that shit, right. and then you're only strengthening them, right? right. So like, there's a, there's a sort of, personal morality of like how do I want to go about living my life yeah it's 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 um, it's unfortunate that that's the reality I mean I looked at the comments in that story and I looked at the feedback that they were getting on Twitter and I saw that a lot of people were fighting that fight for me anyway because it was so obvious it was so transparent um, and it was such a bad story it was just ridiculous and thank you so much by the way for helping me in that fight because you know they they obviously mischaracterized who you are as well um, because they don't care about facts. Um, and yeah, it, it is a catch-22, it is the ultimate catch-22, it, it is a quintessential catch-22, because yeah. um, you can't just, at least maybe some people can, but I'm, I have pride, like, when I see things like this, this, this is hurtful when you see your, your, your character being mischaracterized and being dragged down into the, into the muck for a very innocent joke from the cutting room floor of, uh, you know, Married with Children or something yeah. you hear on CBS. I mean, this is not... Uh, I, I, this is not an offensive joke. Yeah. You have got to try and just bend over backwards to be offended by something like this. Uh, we had said on our shows one million more offensive things that were so far beyond the pale compared yeah. to this. That was the biggest shock to me of all was 
I didn't expect that particular reaction to take gain so much traction because I'm like, certainly these people know that on our shows we are super inappropriate. <laughs> That's part of like yeah. who we are and our character. So I assumed uh, that people would know that about me, and I understand that some context is lost on Twitter, and this is going to reach people that it never that it never uh, would otherwise reach. But that's not relevant to me because it's not like I was making this most heinous joke. The joke is literally that women can be loud or shrill. That's the joke. Yeah, it's a joke every, as old as time. Every sitcom ever mm-hmm. is about the overbearing woman and the dull, you know, the idiot right. husband or boyfriend who just wants some peace and quiet. Every sitcom for the last forty years. Yeah, exactly, and. The, the big mistake that people make, I think, out there, or um, this kind of perception about the joke is that, like, the, oh, you should be so, you know, sh- shaming people in a submission. And as I, as I said in the beginning, Dave, like, I'm not sorry. I'm yeah. not apologetic. If my, you know who's stood behind me 100%? My girlfriend, who I've known since we were 18 years old. I'm 32. Uh, my mother. My sisters, both of them staunch, bleeding heart liberals and feminists. Yeah. I mean, my sister Dana especially, like a, a staunch feminist. Yeah. My aunts, female cousins, uh, female friends, people that actually know me, people that know who my character. If, if, if some person on Twitter is offended by that, but none of the people that actually <laughs> matter to me and are relevant to me in my everyday life are, well, that's, that's kind of the quandary that those people find themselves in, because they think that they can push people into a corner and bully them and punch them and knock them down and stab them in the back and do all these things as if I'm going to apologize, and I'm not. Yeah, and I think that's, wh- that's why this feels like something big to me, because it's happening not only to a, a new friend of mine, but, but all you're doing is sharing your thoughts. And now your your whole work situation has changed. We'll get to that in just a second. But you know, when I when I talk about these words, bigot, racist, all of this stuff, and how dangerous they are, and what it can how it can ruin somebody and all that stuff. Well, here's some actual evidence of it. Let's throw up the headline that the International Business Times, which is a legit a legit organization, okay, this is a real place of journalism, or so I thought. Look at the headline that they put up about your tweet. Kind of funny, Collins Moriarty resigns after targeting women in racist joke, insists it's his personal decision. I think everyone can get what the key word there is, racist. Now, can we throw up the original tweet again, just to be absolutely crystal clear on what the tweet was and what happened on that? Let's get that up for just a second. Ah, peace and quiet. You can see the racial overtones Yeah, it's very, it's very... When you're so perpetually offended, you can't even keep your adjectives straight. <clears throat> I mean, think about that. So this is a legit organization. Hmm. Now they're labeling you as racist. And yep. we know what this means now. It gets caught in some Google algorithm, hmm. and people will Google you, and, and uh, it, it's there. It's just there. It's, it's, it's awful, and um, the outrage that that particular thing generated from people who know me was over the top. Like the like yeah. the the, um, the legit outrage. Like there's in like this legit case. like getting yeah. texts from people I've known forever that are. This became a story in my circle from old high school friends and stuff. And I know that this is like the oh you have a black friend kind of thing. But my I used to play basketball um, and we used to cut class and play basketball and go out to eat and stuff with, with this this black guy named Charles who I was really close with in in, in high school. And uh, I saw his he uh, I was just going through my messages that I was getting on um, on Facebook on the posts that I posted one of the posts. There's like thousands of them, so I, but his caught my eye. And we're friends on Facebook, so I think it just kind of brought it up to the top or whatever for me. And he, he, he was outraged. Yeah. Like, he's like, I've known Colin since we were kids. This isn't true. And that was kind of the reaction I got from lots of different people as the character assassination began and the yeah. dogpiling began because people who actually know who I am like know the, the the nature of my character, but it goes beyond that, Dave. Because a joke like this shouldn't solicit me even having to <laughs> say this, you know. Yeah. And uh, and people just look for any reason to just kick you when you're down. Yeah. Um. And and so seeing something like that, that outraged me more than anything because I was reading, you know, I, I went on Google the news kind of feed and was seeing who was writing about me, and it was a lot of you know small game outlets and stuff like that, and that's fine. And then I got I think a respectable story from uh, Kotaku. Um, which is a big gaming website. My, actually, my buddy Jason wrote it, and I thought he was very respectful. Um, and it's fair. He didn't agree with the joke. I, I talked to him both privately and publicly about that. That's fine. Um, this has no, oh, nothing to do with the exactly, joke at this point. Exa- no, it doesn't. And <laughs> and um, so seeing like that, you're right. Like I was outraged, and I actually, thanks to your help, emailed uh, their their executive editor, um, and uh, was the first time I ever really like 
the first time I actually was kidding around with your husband about it when I emailed him about it later, where I was, I was like, it's the first time where I was like, I will get my lawyer involved in this. This is so egregious what you guys yeah. are doing now, calling me a racist. Now in Lexus Nexus forever, or in in yeah. um, Google forever, no matter if you delete that, and they deleted it and 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 did some half you know half assed apology after it was live for a day. Yeah. That's still going to exist forever. Now, Colin Moriarty and racist are going to be associated. But what have I ever done? That 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 is such an egregious. That is the ultimate character assassination. That it, is a word that you do not want to be associated with, and I've never done anything to associate myself with that word. And just to be crystal clear, again, your tweet had nothing to do with race. Exactly. So this isn't that you maybe said something racial that some outraged buffoon could be like, "Oh, this is racist." Your tweet literally had nothing to do with race in any way whatsoever. No, and that's what I was saying about about keeping adjectives. You know, when 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 you're so offended, when you're looking to just be offended, and that's that's what these group of people do. They just look, they just lurch from one thing to the next as yeah. this big zombie horde looking to uh, destroy people. Yeah. Over innocuous things and they try to tether people together and they try, you know, go to some of these message boards, you need some yarn and like a map on the, on the bulletin board. <laughs> people have, you know, it's like, it's, like, uh, it's like Mel Gibson and conspiracy theory. These, these, some of these people are fucking crazy. Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's the, one of the, the things I learned, like, and it just gets out of control. This tweet turns into like all of these things, everything I've ever said, now they attack, they'll attack anything, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I have, it, it goes, it's, it's, so, it's so zany, like, yeah. uh, Colin um, said, you know, I, I've often said I don't believe in diversity for diversity's sake. What I always meant by that was that storytellers need to tell their story. So there shouldn't be a quota in video games, for instance, on, uh, although there's too many white men. I, get, I bought you Uncharted, for instance. Yeah. Uh, almost exclusively a white cast, not completely. That was the story that, was, that they wanted to tell. If they wanted to tell Uncharted with just uh, Asian women, and that was what they felt served the story, then that's totally fine. That's what yeah. I mean by that. But taken out of context, because they're looking for some way to nail me, they're like, come on, that means Colin's a racist. Yeah. You know, uh, or Colin's a bigot or Colin's a sexist. They ignore this entire body of work yeah. that I've put out over the years, videos on transgender rights, my massive and popular rant on the Confederate flag, uh, my, my, my video on Ferguson and, and, and the rights of black people in the United States, my very staunch defense of gay marriage, my defense of pro-choice platforms, uh, my very, you know, and, and I'm more liberal than a lot of these people right. socially as well. We were talking about it yesterday. Like I'm for decriminalization of drugs. I'm yeah. for legalization of polygamy. I'm for like all these things. I'm like, but I know I'm a far right maniac, but you're uh, more left than me on certain things. Right? Yeah, I'm not even fully there on the full decriminalization. So right, like, like, <laughs> and know. that's the thing. We and we can we can respectfully disagree, right? Sure. You and I, as you said, I got here. You know, uh, you and your husband uh, accommodated me so kindly, and my girlfriend. We got here a little after six, after a little bit of an Uber odyssey, which was funny. Yeah. And um, like you said, we just talked nonstop. Yeah. About all these things, because there's so much to say about so little based on the reaction that people had to something so minute because it was an opportunity. We, and there's we, so many reasons why that is. Yeah, we didn't even get to play video games. I know, it's such a shame. You but we did, we did kill a bottle of uh, Knob Creek, but we didn't get yet. <laughs> yeah, we did well in the, in the bourbon department, but, <laughs> but I pointed at the system that you just mm. got me, and I was like, we'll get to that later. Right. 10 hours later, we're still talking about the same thing mm. because of the feeding frenzy. So, okay. So I think people get that. I think they get the idea of just they see a little blood in the water and just the way the gaming community turned on you. But you did say something interesting to me was that a lot of people were privately backing you. So publicly they wouldn't defend you. Well, you know, well-known people and journalists and all that, they wouldn't touch it, right? A couple people did, but that privately people have been defending you. And this gets to the crux of what I think is wrong in society right now. People are afraid to say what they think because why put their, if you've now been labeled a racist for a joke about women, which wasn't even <laughs> offensive. It's straight out of Orwell. It, right, it really, it's, it's right out of 1984, but then the risk for them is why, why bother putting my neck out because ne they'll come for me next. Right, exactly. And that's why you will have my absolute undying defense because I see this happening with people, I've seen it starting to happen to me, and we need people to step up, this cannot, exist anymore. Right, I've been using the word phalanx a lot, the idea that we can we can form a, a shield around, uh, a, a meat shield even around these ideas and die on these hills that are worth dying on. Um, the, the, the issue here with me um, is that these perpetually outraged, these professionally outraged oppression Olympics participants will not get a fucking inch from me, yeah. ever. They will not get an inch. If you give them, they will not get a quark from me, an atom. And because if you give them anything, they'll take it all. Yeah. And I'm not going to be the one responsible for it. They can, they can run roughshod over me and ruin me and do all those things, but I will not be responsible for outrage culture gaining another mile in the fight. I'd rather just sit here 
and, uh, and ruin my career and die on this hill. And at least people can look back on that and be like, well, he did the right thing for, for the freedom of expression and the freedom of speech and the freedom to, to say things without, and, and have commensurate reactions to that kind of thing. You would think that I made, you would think that I went to Auschwitz yeah. and stood there on a platform and screamed about and, and screamed a Jewish joke or an SS yeah. joke or something like that. Um, that was the level of outrage that that tweet drew, and they won't get a fucking iota of movement from me on that. Not one iota, and they can't handle. That, that's the that, thing is that they they're used to pushing that. people in a, in a corner and, and making them submit. I'm not saying I'm the first one that's ever done it. We've heard this from Jerry Seinfeld and Chris Rock and all the guys that won't play colleges anymore because everyone's a baby. No. And th- I'm just in my own little way, in my own in my own uh, format, I'm going to fight that fight. But the funny thing is, is that it didn't ruin my career. It made me even bigger. And I, like the, the the people that yeah. are talking to me and the and the and the, and the um, the feedback that I'm getting is has been positive, and the opportunities and the doors that are opening for me are incredible. And I didn't do it to that end. I was just doing what I thought was the right thing. But you said something to me, Dave, on the last show, which was so, we were talking about the prescience of something I said. Well, the, the, the prescience um, of something you said as well, which we were talking about, uh, oh, oh God, I'm losing my train of thought now. We were talking about. Uh, I said something really genius. I you think said, that's yeah, where you were going. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it home here. Come on now. <laughs> let, me come, let me come back to that in a minute because I, 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 I went too far on my own rant to even, to even remember what I was saying. Uh, but yeah, these people will go out and try to ruin you and uh, they, will, they, will, they want an inch and we can't give it to them. We have, yeah. to, we have to defend those kinds of things. And I was taking so much, um, I was taking so much feedback from people out there that were that were supporting me and the level, oh no, I remember what it is, I'm sorry. We're doing this live, I guess. We're so. doing this live. You there, said there that it was no a special, your, your quote was, it's a special level of cowardice. Yeah. That people, well, I was talking about conservatives in the gaming industry, libertarians in the gaming industry, how they talk to me and they funnel things through me and I've, I, and I've been their proxy. And you said that it took a, lo- a special level of cowardice to do that. And the special level of cowardice really came out to me, Dave, with the people that defended me, not at all publicly, but would come to me and be like, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. Yeah. And I'm so, and um, the, some of those people I appreciate, but a lot of those people I never want to hear from ever again. I'm sick of being these people's proxy in their meat shield. And, and they just hang me out to dry. And some of these people that assaulted me in public um, and went on and on in their little subtweet t- uh, tweets with each other, um, some of them are in this industry because I helped push for them to be in this industry. Some of them, you know, one in particular literally got you know, their job because of me. Yeah. Uh, these people would never say this to my face. They would shake my hands and do all these kinds of things, but have but disparage me behind, you know, in their in their own little safe space, um, and pile on in such a way that it, it is so mean spirited and it is so transparent to so many people how mean spirited it is that the reaction I got uh, from that was so positive yeah. because people I can identify that from a mile away. Well, I do believe it's a special level of cowardice, but in a way they don't even realize, and I think this is why it's important to talk about, how they're compounding the problem. Because they're subtly saying, someone else can do this, but I can't do it. And then they're saying something nice privately to you so that they can still feel good about themselves, but it has no value. If anything, it, as you've just <laughs> elicited, it makes you angrier, actually. It, it shows the, their lack of strength. We need people to be outspoken for very simple issues here, not for con- these, we're not even talking about anything controversial. That's that's the irony here. Yeah, and and that's that is the irony, and and, and the the specific again mean spiritedness of it, but also the 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 vitriolic nature of it. It's like what what does it serve? Like what are you trying to do? do it, like if I'm when, if I'm destroyed, for instance, is that did you win? Yeah, you just vanquished a dude for a, for an innocuous joke. Innocuous joke. Are you the winner now? Is, like, is, that, is that the goal? Now you won and you can move on to the next person that you want to make into a corpse. You know, it's, it is and, so outrageous the, the way these people, these people think that they can treat others. You yeah. know? And, and some people will be out there and be like, it's so hypocritical that you think you can make a joke uh, immune from, from feedback. And I'm like, I didn't say that. Yeah. I want commensurate feedback to what happened. If I went out and killed someone, then I expect that I'm going to be arrested and lambasted in public and thrown in prison and, no, and they're going to throw away the key and never see me again. Do, does anyone out there, intellectual, intellectually honest person out there, think that what happened to me is is equivalent to the joke? Yeah. No, and, it's not. And by the way, I, I would go even a step further that it doesn't have to be totally commensurate. You could put the tweet out there, and then if you got an onslaught of hate, just people saying, I hate this tweet, or you're stupid, or you're a misogynist, or blah, 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 that actually would be them just expressing their free speech. But the the it then becomes a feeding frenzy that makes it much more dangerous, thus related to your livelihood 
and your future. So let's let's get to that part. Right. Okay. So kind of funny, which you helped co-create, which yep. you uh, were, I guess I can say were now a partner in a, an extremely successful business. Uh, my audience knows that when we launched Patreon, when we decided to go fan funded, it was because we saw you guys, and I thought. I looked at what you were doing and I was like, we could do this. So some of my own success is directly related to seeing what you guys did. You've created a hugely successful business. You now, because of this tweet, are no longer even part of that. So I know you don't wanna throw anyone under the bus and we don't have to get into obviously insider things that you can't really talk about. But I think for your audience, they wanna hear you just explain what's going on here, why, why you're not part of the company anymore. And, we can sort of get into a few of the things that you sure. want to do going forward and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Uh, I mean, the, at, at a base level, I felt like because of um, the feedback from some people in the industry and the way that the company felt like it needed to respond, which I respect because we're a voting company. I mean, there's, there's, uh, I'm not, I don't, you know, swing my dick around and think that that's going to be like, that's going to be the way it is. You yeah. know, like, like if other people disagree with me, I need to respect that. Um, and I wanted to respect that that was the community that they wanted to build, and I didn't want to become a distraction um, to the community and to my co-founders, who I've known for years, and I want, the, I, I want them to succeed and, I, and, um, and do whatever it is that they want to do. And so I felt the best way to deal with it, since I wasn't going to apologize, and since we were on two different pages, clearly, was that I was like, let's just, let's just nip this in the bud now, you know, because we're just going to come back to this again later, and then again later, and then again later. Um, because our trajectories are different. And I didn't want to punish them, and I didn't want to punish the audience. Um, I'm not going to get into the behind the scenes things about the yeah. way we, we, about the way everything went down and, and all that kind of stuff. I have too much respect um, for uh, the situation and for them and for uh, the audience again. But I felt like by removing myself, uh, the audience would be able to move on with the company it seemed like that they wanted. And, um, and I wish everyone all the best on that. But it wasn't, you know, it, it was clear that we were going to come to this, to this, and, and, and this hill again, and I was going to try to defend it. And um, you know, it's, um, it was just not something I wanted to do. So I made a decision very quickly, and uh, and I, I have no real regret about it. Like it's, I, I, I wish them all the best. Um, and I, I, I even, you know, am working on selling my shares back to the company because. Um, I want them to be able to move forward as a unit. I don't want them yeah. to have to bounce things off of me um, anymore because they have a different vision and I respect that. I don't want to drag them in a different direction that they don't want to go in. Um, and so who, what kind of person would I be? What kind of man would I be? What kind of friend would I be? And what kind of uh, creator would I be if I, was, if I made it all about me? So that was my way to withdraw. And, um, and I'm so sorry that some, some people seem upset about it. Other people I'm sure are happy about it. I'm sure it all even out, and uh, so that's kind of the story there. I, I wanted to just go in, in a different direction, and I've often wanted to do something else anyway. Video games have never been my biggest passion, and um, as we talked about on the on the episode that we did just last week, um, or that aired just last week, when I got my job offer, you know, I was a freelancer for IGN from age 18 to 22, and they offered me a job when I had graduated college. I was about to start my my uh, master's in, in American history, so I was already on this different trajectory that was really more in line with the things I truly, truly love, which is history and politics and philosophy and all those kinds of things, and that's what the future holds for me. Yeah, I mean, that that's incredibly obvious, but just to be clear, you made a Choice. You made. You didn't got. Get, did not get fired. No, I did not get fired. about all that stuff. You didn't get fired. You made a choice. They didn't and, even ask and, me to leave. And you also. Well, that's worth repeating, probably. They didn't ask me to leave. Yeah. Like it wasn't. That was my idea. You know. Yeah. Um, you know. You can't. You, like I don't know where it would have gone if the conversation went on and on and on and in different directions. But it never got to that point. I. I, I had left before. I didn't want to have this. I didn't want to like nuke the fucking place. You know yeah. what I mean? I understood whatever what was going on, and I was like, let's just let's just end it. Yeah, and I thought that that was the most respectful thing for all parties. I was trying to do the right thing. What's the piece of this that goes to like just sort of moral clarity, having some moral clarity? Because I think when when we sat down the first time, that's one of the things that was most impressive to me about you. You have a, I, it's very clear to me that you have a code that you live by. It's it's very much who you are, and that's what it is. And it's sort of take it or leave it. But this is the way I am. And even the way you did this so quickly, I think most people, I think probably including myself, it would have probably been a little messier, it might have been a little more public, it might have taken more time, but I think you just kind of just laid it out. Where does that come from within you, just sort of that, that clean yeah, uh, it's, it's ability? What I thought about, I thought about the audience, and I thought about the people that were there for me for years, that enjoyed our content and, and made, made us who we were and made me who I am. And 
for me, I was like, can I sit here with moral clarity and disingenuously act like I'm happy and disingenuously act like I want to do this? Because I don't. And, and you know, not after that and not, not you know, I, I felt like I could never be myself again. And that I would put them in a, in a hard place and it would cause more fights than we already had behind the scenes and it would cause drama for the audience. And, you know, I made a lot of money. Yeah. You know, like it, it's not an inconsequential amount of money yeah. that I walked away from. But I felt like it was the right thing to do. I can't live for the paycheck anymore. Yeah. And it's, it is, um, I'm a big fan of the movie Boiler Room, which takes place on Long Island. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Ben Affleck in it, I always used to love this quote, he's, he's kind of, uh, he's, he's a big shot with all these, you, you know the movie, he's a big shot with all the guys yeah. sitting around the table, the, the guys that want to be brokers. I actually kind of ancillarily know some of the people that it was based oh, on. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a small world. It's not Long Island. Island. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx. Uh, and uh, he throws his keys on the table, his Porsche or whatever, his keys, and he says this one line that I always loved because as a capitalist and as like a Republican and all the, you know, free market kind of guy, free domestic market kind of guy, I was always like, I want money, I want money, I want money. And um, he was like, uh, the only people that will tell you the money is the root of all evil never had any. And I always kept that in the back of my mind. And I like the statement and money isn't evil. And yeah. having money and wanting money isn't evil. But there is a, there is a, um, a vacancy Mm-hmm. to just doing it for the money. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I made well over twice what I was making at IGN. Yeah. And, and I walked away from it, just completely walked away from it because I can't live that way. I don't want to look back and be like, well, man, my bank account's swollen and I'm fucking miserable. I'd rather make half as much money and do something that is fulfilling and feel like I can be myself and feel like I'm not also ruining the vision of other people that don't deserve to be brought down that a road they don't want to be brought down mm-hmm. and a, an audience that might have different expectations than the ones that we set down to begin with. And so it was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a decision made very rapidly out of respect for all parties, including myself. Yeah. And I felt like it was the right decision. And I felt by like being like, oh, let's take two weeks. I'll give you my two weeks notice and we can. I felt like that was just shitty because then people will look at those two weeks of shows and be like, well, this is, this is not Colin. Yeah. So they got the last shows that we did were the real Colin. And, and um, I think that everyone involved probably appreciates that, I hope. Yeah. Isn't the, the money thing is an interesting piece of this because, okay, so you walked away from it, but there's a beauty in terms of what we and many other people that are doing, content creators are doing where we, we aren't beholden to anyone now but ourselves. So I'll see sometimes in the YouTube comment section, people will be like, oh, Ruben's just talking about this or this or that for money. And it's like, I was telling you last night, like I've gotten two huge offers for this show that would make me way more money that I've said no to in the last 10 days. Way more money than I'm making right now because I can do what I think is right by doing it this way. And obviously my goal isn't just money. You know what I mean? So there's a beauty in that, that whatever you do going forward, which I know a gajillion people are asking, uh, and I think you'll probably have some answers in the next couple of days or yeah. so, uh, that you don't, it's not about chasing the money. You need some money to do it, but, right. it's not, but it genuinely isn't. No, I like to live a comfortable life. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't need much. I don't want to be like a multi-billionaire living a playboy lifestyle or anything like that. I want to have, I want to be comfortable and I am comfortable and I have, you know, plenty of money in the bank and I'll be fine. Like it's, and I'm being bought out. It's like, it's like, I'll be fine on that front. This, yeah. this gives me this gives me room to do what I'm passionate about and figure that path out. Money's a necessary evil in the sense that, like, yeah, you, you, need, you need to pay rent, you need to eat, you need to do all these things. And I don't begrudge anyone's, anyone's pursuit of the, bo- of, of the dollar. But to me- You are a capitalist. I am, I am a, capital, a capitalist. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm totally a capitalist yeah. and I think it's fantastic. And I was an entrepreneur and I won't, I'm gonna continue to be an entrepreneur. And I, I, and, and I believe that I'm, you know, that every possibility that I'll make even more money in the future. But that's, can't be the, that can't be the end goal. It, I, I, I would have stayed just for that to be the end goal, and I respect if that's the end goal for a lot of people out there. Um, yeah. But it, 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 I tried, yeah. and um, I, I, I put everything on a, a mental list, and I'm like, the money's there somewhere on the list. But my fucking sanity and my happiness and my authenticity yeah. comes above that, and uh, and I think that that's going to resonate with people too. Again, um, I didn't want my f- co-founders, who I've known for a long time. These aren't just people that I found at some mm-hmm. at some entrepreneur, you know, you know, some rotary club, you know. These are people I've known for a long time and they deserve a partner that is in. And the audience deserved a partner that had an aligned vision with that. 
And so to be to live for the almighty dollar only, I could I would I, I could have stayed, made more and more and more and more money. Yeah. Um, but that, but again, to what end? My my girlfriend always used the the example like you know you you, you can bring all that money with like are you going to put it behind the hearse? You know, like <laughs> right. like like at, at right. what point? You can't is, bring it with you. Yeah, exactly. At what point is it is it just like just do what you need to do and be happy and and uh, and be yourself? Yeah. And I need to be myself. And I have no doubt that whatever you're going to do next, and we. Talk that talked out a little bit last night sure did. Uh, over a lot of bourbon. It's like, ah, man, it gets you. Mm -hmm. It gets you. You feeling a little sluggish? 120 proof, uh, yeah, Knob Creek. Yeah, all right. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to, I have one more thing that I really want to address with Colin. And then we're going to, we've enabled Super Chat if you're in the YouTube comment section right now. I know we're streaming on Facebook as well. But if you jump into YouTube, uh, we've enabled Super Chat. So we will let you guys ask, ask questions. I usually think I'm pretty decent asking questions. But I know that there's a lot of you that want to directly ask Colin things or maybe you want to ask me things or uh, both of us, our feelings on just the general themes that we're talking about and all that. Uh, so if you jump in on Super Chat, uh, Amira and David are going to send them over to me and I got my iPad right here and we'll do that for you know, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, but the last thing that I wanted to ask you specifically before we get to that, and I, and I think people are going to have a lot of interesting things to ask us, um, what, for someone that's watching this, that's feeling this, because there's so many people feeling this, this fear of saying something the wrong way, posting something on Facebook the wrong way, a stupid joke that goes awry, and they're not even public people. Like, it's one thing, you're a public person, so the feeding frenzy is, right. is doubled. Right? Yeah, or, it's or, magnified, yeah. You know, many times over. But for even private people that occasionally might say something controversial or just share some thought. Sometimes I get people messaging me, they go, Dave, I'm afraid to share your videos because I don't want to deal with the hate I'm going right. to get. I'm afraid to, like, I'm giving you guys the most middle of the road stuff. Yeah, we're discussing. It's very it. harrowing what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, there's a lot of hate around here. You know, it's endless. It's a hate fest around here. But for those people, I, I, that's what I think we have to figure out what's next for is that all of these people that are watching this right now are going, I feel this. What Colin's going through right now, I get it on my own uh, micro level right. of being afraid to say what I, how do we destroy this monster? I, I, I don't know that you're gonna have an answer on I that. I think one, you but. destroy the monster by bringing them into the light. I say keep saying exactly what you wanna say. If you, uh, if you have something controversial to say or just something innocuous to say, because it doesn't matter to these people, it can be as innocuous as my joke and they're gonna still come at you, expose them. Then we know who they are. Then we know not to take them seriously and we can continue to talk amongst ourselves. You know. One of the things I noticed most is that, well, by and large, I had major support for, for the decision I made everywhere. Yeah. Except for places within the gaming industry that is very hyper-liberal, as an example. Yeah. And what you noticed on these Twitter threads is they're just talking to each other. Most of these people don't even have an audience. Yeah. Like, th like these people just talk to each other. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean-spirited in any way, but it seems like a lot of this is, is, is the attempt, the old attempt to, what they say, punch up, right? Yeah. And to go at people themselves. And there's, there's, some, there's, some, there's certainly a, a level of, of uh, envy from people that look at YouTube and look at this new space and know that they're not gonna have, you know, not gonna have an outlet to, to do their thing anymore in a few years unless they change and adapt, and they wanna destroy that. And that's why it, it's no coincidence to me that it was YouTubers and everyone that came and, 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 and tried to protect, uh, protect me, in a sense, because these other people are so mean spirited and so echo and, and so in their echo chamber and so willing to just to just be uh, as vitriolic and as angry as humanly possible over something so silly. Yeah. Um, it shows a lot about who they are. It shows a lot about what they're about. And for me, you want to expose those people. Those people should be out in the open. And so keep doing your thing. Yeah. Don't worry about that particular response. We've yeah. also weaponized the incentive for them to do bad things, right? Because as we talked about before, by them writing some bullshit, even if no one, like the, the nonsensical article that this guy wrote on Polygon, which was garbage. Again, a guy who I've never heard of on a site that I personally had never been to, but I get it. It's, it's, a, known, yeah, it's a known site in, yeah. the, in the game world. Mm -hmm. But it only benefits him to, to jump on the feeding frenzy. He then drives clicks by you having to defend yourself, thus making him more money at the same time while fueling his fake sense of virtue signaling. So he starts, ah, see, that guy's a racist. I'm a good guy. I then looked at the guy's Twitter feed. The tweets where I was defending you about it got you know, probably into the thousands of favorites and retweets. His tweet about me you know, so whatever it was, got literally one favorite. So we've unfortunately, the system is now incentivizing these people who have no other traction to do bad work. Like that, we gotta figure out how to yeah. manage that. Too. They're they're waning, and that's just obvious to anyone that's paying attention. I don't care what the, the, the micro traffic looks like, I don't care if you had a better week or month, this month than the last month, you, you, your sites are dying, period. 
and and we all know it. And um, yeah, it is a way. It is it, doing stuff like this and targeting specifically the people they target. Yeah, is a way for them to to signal um, um, that sinking ship for all of us to see. And uh, because the thing, you know, that's the other thing is that you know. We talked about the things that we agree that we found agreement on. That I find agreement on with a lot of these people in their politics, and you'd also find that I was not a very mean-spirited person, actually, at all. I don't go after individuals. I don't dogpile anyone. You would never find an example of me doing this to someone, yeah. like to like literally just going after a person to such a degree that they that they, they feel like they need to quit a job or do anything like, um, you know. And and you never, I never, I don't think ever once used the term social justice warrior or <laughs> snowflake yeah. or cuck. Or any of these things that go around; those aren't words that are even in my vocabulary. Yeah, I've used uh, a couple vir- of them. Yeah, virtue signal. I'm not saying you're wrong. What I'm yeah, saying yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. like, I've always been somewhat respectful in the sense that um, we can have a dialogue that is that is of a higher degree than that. Um, but you know, things are it's it's things are changing for them, and it's the same argument we had last time about media dying in, in politics. Well, that media is dying too. And these are the death throes of a dying medium that doesn't want to give uh, doesn't want to give um, any any quarter to uh, YouTube into this new space that is going to absolutely kill it. So um, j- the same that all of these these newspapers and magazines that write hit pieces and go after people and make it very personal are doing it because they're too in their death throes. And we have to we have to elevate and raise the level of dialogue, which is what I'm going to try to do with what I do next. Um, and I hope that people understand that they don't have to feed into this anymore. Um, and that these people uh, that wanted to come after me and be mean spirited to me—it's not about your social cachet. It's not about any of those kinds of things because I think that in itself is mean spirited. Um, it's simply about an anger and a fear, and I understand that. And like I said on your last show, I'd be scared if what I was doing was waning too, but it's not. And um, so there's that, that's a whole other sub level to what happened to me. Yeah. Um, it's not only the politics. It's not only personal. It's not all those things. There's a whole sub level to it as well, and we all know that. Yeah, and ironically it will eat itself. I mean, that's what I keep saying about this thing. This snake will eat itself because all of these people who are either throwing you under the bus publicly or are only defending you privately, it will come for them too. That's why I keep saying, one day, mark my words, the left, this regressive left, I haven't said that phrase in quite some time, uh, it will come for Bernie. He is a rich white man with three houses. They will have to eat. One day he will say something slightly off the range and they will have to come for him too. And that's a direct parallel to this because all of these people that are trying to be holier than thou with you, one day they're gonna say something too and they will be subjected to the same insanity. Yeah, and don't look at my direction to protect you. Yeah. You know, like uh, I would have um, been more than happy to do that. I, I, I will defend a person's right to expression and the right to, to say what they need to say. As long as you're not hurting anyone, I'm very libertarian in that sense. If you're, not, if you're not hurting anyone, express yourself, explore difficult ideas, be wrong sometimes. Uh, don't be afraid of guilt by association. Talk to people you disagree with. Uh, Read challenging books. Read a book at all. I mean, all these people running around <laughs> using the word fascist. Jesus Christ, yeah. it's getting old. Yeah. You know, um, there's so many parallels between the United States and the Weimar Republic. Don't you know, Dave? <laughs> um, and uh, you know, to me, it's just this is a natural. The pendulum's swinging. We're in an inflection point. Things are changing. The parties are changing. As I tweeted out yesterday or two days ago, the um, the 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 regressive left is becoming the Christian right before your very eyes. And I don't mean that in a disrespect to people of faith either. What I mean is that the Christian right, known for, you know, going after D&D and video games and violence on TV and they're very puritanical and if you don't agree with them, you're bad and all that. Well, what the fuck do you think the regressives sound like, you know? It's time to look in the mirror and figure out the, the, the exact direction you're going in and you're right. Bernie Sanders is a champagne socialist with three houses and all these kinds of things, and they've ignored all of that because he never even had a job until he was in his 40s. They yeah. ignore all that because he has all these progressive messages, but they will turn on him, and they're going to turn on these other people too, and they're going to understand what that might feel like and how they could have stemmed the tide um, for a person they might have even disagreed with. Um, and I think it's, it's super scary, the direction we're going, and people like me and you need to, to, to stand up and others out there stand up and make and, 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 and force some change or at least fight. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a fight of, of, of epic proportions or like a, some sort of verbally violent fight. Yeah. It's just saying, no. Yeah, that's it. No, that's it. And I, before we get into the questions, I wanna say yeah. one thing to you personally. And I've said this to you privately, but I want everyone to know it. When I was out there drowning, you were the first person that lent me your hand and you treated me, it, it's bringing tears to my eyes. 
you and your husband and your and your and you treated me like you're my newest friend and you treated me like you were my oldest friend. When people out there that I've known forever just abandoned me. And thank you. Well, I well, thank you for that. All right. So, you know, what, let's let's do this. Uh, you know, we're going to we'll take a quick break, right? We're doing this thing live. We're going to take just a quick break. Have a little water. Uh, bourbon talking. Um, yeah, we'll do a little quick break and then we'll jump into the super chat and, and we'll go for a while. I mean, I want to hear your thoughts. I, I genuinely do. I know Colin does. And whatever you ask, look, we're not, this is not about throwing people under the bus. This is not about attacking people and, and any of that nonsense. But if you keep it respectful, that's exactly what you'll get from us. And uh, yeah, we'll take a, just like a two minute break.
All right, guys, we're back. I, I feel like Oprah. Like we're doing a little yeah. Oprah yeah. situation. We should be out in the forest. You know, she's always out in the forest now. <laughs> you know these commercials? She's in yeah. a forest at a fancy table with all, and they're eating bread, and it's very. We, it's very strange. And she'll, and she'll maybe she'll run for president one day. <laughs> I mean, it's all heading. It's all heading in that direction. Yeah. All right, guys. So here's here's what we're gonna do. So if you're playing along on YouTube, we're using the super chat. That's a way that you guys are able to uh, bump up your chat because we know that the chat in YouTube is a little nutty. Uh, but for a couple bucks or whatever it is, your chat gets a, you know, higher spacing and we can see it. So we've gotten a ton of things and we're going to do as many as we can. We'll, we'll be here for a while. That's okay. Um, but people want to know what's going on. Uh, and as I said, if people treat it with respect, we'll, we'll answer as many as we can. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so first off, uh, this isn't even a question, but uh, somebody wants you to go on the Joe Rogan podcast. We got your back, man. I think, think Joe's already been saying nice things about you. Yeah, right? Joe actually reached out to me privately, and um, and yeah, we've been corresponding back and forth. And uh, yeah, he he went him and Jim Norton. It was a very surreal experience. It's the same word I used with Glenn Beck when I just opened yep. my interview, and he's like, "Why is it surreal?" And I had those things. Well, Joe Rogan's a, a whole different level of surreal for me. Um, we he's reached out. He, he was gonna. He told me a day or two ago that he's gonna pitch some dates at me. But obviously, he's such a busy man. I'm you know I'm ready to do it whenever he's ready. Yeah. And, and I, I want to say for the record, I think I said this to you already. But Joe to me, Joe, so much of my success is directly related to him by going on his show the first time and then I was on the day before the election and he's generous with his audience which is to me is like the greatest thing you can say about somebody in the public space because a lot of people are just pr want to protect their little audience they think if they show them something else they might disappear yeah. and it's completely not how he is and I think it's a great way to operate and he's a great guy okay uh, Colin does your future include making content regarding the gaming industry or are you washing your hands of that altogether no I think that you can expect uh, you know uh, that's like, it's something you and I talked about and I'm, I'm going to go in a direction that is much more uh, political and historical and philosophical. I've been playing video games for almost 30 years, every day of my life, and they're an important part of who I am, and I'm happy, and I'm so excited to reclaim them as a hobby. <laughs> um, but there's going to be things I'm going to need to say about them still. You're not going to you're not going to find reviews or criticism of them for me. But you're going to if a game is political or a game touches a, a, a theme, it's going to be it's, we're going to do that, and I think that you can expect that. There'll be gaming content that will be of relevance to you as well, yeah. um, but don't don't think of it as like when I was at IGN. Or something. And by the way, when we were discussing, you know, sort of how we can work together in the future, last night mm -hmm. it was funny because I was kind of like dragging. How do we figure out where we do something with mm -hmm. games? You were like, how do we figure out where we do something with politics? I have a feeling we're going to meet in the middle yeah. and, and figure out some other ways. To yeah, absolutely, I agree. In with the future. You. Um, uh, all right, so here's something that's sort of video game related. Uh, Colin, are we going to be able to read or hear your thoughts on future games? Uh, for example, the last. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two. So I think. Yeah, I mean, maybe on Twitter or something like that. I think The Last of Us Part Two is clearly going to have the. You know, The Last of Us is a very interesting uh, social and political game. It's about if you don't know, it's a, it's made by the guys that make Uncharted. Yeah. And it's The Last of Us is in my mind one of the great games of all time, and I think that's pretty common. Um, and it's about the end of the world and um, a father daughter relationship and the the. Um, you know, that that this man develops with a, a with a teenage girl that reminds him of the daughter he lost uh, during the apocalypse, basically, and. Um, there's a lot of themes like later on it comes out that she's you know a lesbian and and uh, the game is incredibly diverse and the game is incredibly progressive in that way and so I suspect Neil Druckmann's a personal friend of mine I, who was the creator of it and I just went out to dinner with him a couple of weeks ago um, and my suspicion we know we all know Neil out there uh, he will have a lot of themes that are going to be worth talking about that don't even really have to do with the game as a game yeah by the way I'm just getting into this world now since you got me the PS4 and I'm fiddling around mm -hmm. with it and now in this a little bit and just from talking to you. I didn't realize, you know, I knew this thing was big, that video games are big, obviously, and all that, but just the breadth of, like, actually dealing with real issues and how, I'm, I'm still amazed, and I will probably be forever now, about how the community is so broad and it's everybody of every walk of life and all that. Like, of course, I knew that, but really now experiencing it and seeing the way people react to you now and this whole thing, it's, it's incredible. All right, uh, keep up the good work, Colin. Thank you, Ruben, for having him on. As founding, uh, as founding a new casual gaming review and podcast company with differing views, uh, it's Casual Misfits Gaming, what advice do you have for us? So for somebody that's maybe where right. you were five years ago. Yeah, I think that uh, it's the advice we always give, and I think that the, I know you know this, consistency is the most important. You can't do a podcast and do it sporadically. You can't have a video series and post it when you want. You can't, like, there's, there's a room for that, I guess, but you will never become big if you do that. Think about... Phil DeFranco and how he does his videos every day. Think about how when we used to do PS I Love You or do Podcast Beyond back in the day, we did them every week. We were so 
we were so absolutely fucking crazy about that, by the way, that even when we would take weeks off, we took two or three weeks, weeks off at the end of the year, we would actually backfill. So there was always an episode on a Tuesday. And you do that I'm, yeah, with your interviews we do as well. It, yeah. You have, if you want an audience, the audience needs to be able to rely on you and uh, for content. Otherwise, they will. There's, there's way too much competition, especially in the gaming space. They will forget about you. And yeah. uh, so that's my biggest advice. Uh, Colin, my brother Colton and I are huge fans of your work. Are you going to stay with YouTube or move on to a new avenue? Would love to see Colin was right on... Uh, Oh, would lo would love to see Colin was right live. Uh, I love you. Oh, Hashtag uh, beyond. Thank you. Hashtag beyond. Uh, beyond. Um, yeah, you're you're gonna find me on YouTube, yeah. um, and uh, doing videos and and things of that nature. I think that's the space I'm in now, and I think that that's the most effective space for us to uh, proliferate our message. Yeah. Um, is there a way for people with different political views to find middle ground and discuss their ideas? Seems like nowadays we're always at each other's throats. I mean, this is what I've spent the last two and a half years of my life trying to do. I think we're making massive headway, and that's why the people that don't want to build bridges are going so hysterical. Right. The people that were throwing you under the bus, that's all they have left. When you have no ideas to stand on, you, you, all you can do is either punch, which that, that's why they want to punch Nazis, right. or, or label everyone a racist. Right, well, so, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, go ahead. I, I, I was gonna say, I agree with you. I think, that, I think that you convinced me of something that I was wrong about when we interviewed the first time. I made the, I made the claim that we were inc incredibly divided. I used the 1850s as, as an example, and for people that aren't historically familiar with that, the 1850s were a, a, a fucking mess in the United States um, you know, during the, uh, the ten years of uh, Franklin Pierce and James Buchanan as the country was tearing itself apart, and James Buchanan famously walked out of the White House when the South Carolina seceded uh, after Abraham Lincoln uh, was elected and was basically like, there's nothing I can do. Like, that was the, ad that was the attitude, right? Can't let us say fair yeah. attitude. We don't know if you can constitutionally leave. We don't know what the rules are about this. We've never dealt with this before. Obviously, Abraham Lincoln vehemently disagreed with that, yeah. uh, the idea that the CSA could, could secede. Um, so these were very violent and, and, and t polarized times. And I see, even though, I don't, as I said on the show, I don't think there's no way we're going to have a civil war in the United States again. Um, but the uh, but I saw in that trends of this divisiveness, this like just two countries developing again. Yeah. But you convinced me, and you were right, and I was wrong. That when I thought, when I really pondered on it, that there are way more normal people and, and and people exploring the gray area than you think. If you get off of Twitter and stop dealing with hyper liberal games journalists and and journalists <laughs> from journalists from uh, newspapers with access to grind and. Uh, all the kind of stuff, and you just go to your local cafe or you go to a diner or something like that. You're going to find people. You might find a Trump supporter and a Clinton supporter sitting next to each other that don't even know that they're, and they strike up a conversation with each other because they, uh, oh, uh, guys talking about baseball. Oh, my son plays baseball and blah blah blah. And you don't get into the politics of it because everyone kind of has the same goals: family, uh, making it, uh, whether it's pay to pay to check the paycheck or sh stuffing money away and trying to live a better life. All those kinds of things. And when you really boil it down to that. That's the, the basis by which we can have the constructive political conversations. You have to find that common ground first. Once that common ground is found, then you can build upon it. And so I think that we want to, as I said before, we want to lop off the, the, I think the 5% on either side that are irrelevant to the conversation and are destructive to the conversation and truncate the middle. And I really do believe, and this is just a tangent, that in the next four, eight, 12 years, we will have a third party president yeah. because of this. Well, I, I mean, I just so firmly believe that. I think the things that most of us want as people, you want some food, you want some sex, you want to love somebody, you want to be around family and friends. That's what all of us truly, at, if you can remove the nonsensical noise, that's what we all care about. That's what we all want. You want to feel validated in your work and be respected by people, all that stuff. The problem is, you're right, it's the 5% on each side that's hysterically screaming. And then when you when you couple that with social media, where they're the angriest and the loudest, it makes it seem like we all hate each other, and I simply, I just simply don't subscribe to that. Uh, two questions for Colin. Why only Adidas superstars, and what do you think is the best place to get news? Love you, dude. Uh, I love you too, thank you. Uh, Adidas thank have been my, my calling card, my, my shell toes have been my calling card yeah. forever. These are probably my 30th pair yeah. uh, of these. I, I, I don't know, they're just, it's just like, Everyone has their little thing. It used to be like Tucker Carlson with his bow tie back in the yeah, day before yeah. John, you know, John Stewart embarrassed him and I felt bad for him at that, that moment on Crossfire. I was like, that was like one of the most cringeworthy things I'd ever seen in my life. Um, but everyone has their little trademark and, um, and that's just mine and, and I enjoy them, I find them comfortable. The construction of them 
leaves a much to be desired. They changed them a few years ago, and they're not as good as they used to be, but I keep wearing them. So that's the reason. Um, and uh, what was the, what was the uh, second and question, the, Dave? The second part was, oh, what do you think is the best place to get news? Oh. I get this question all the time. Yeah. What and, is your answer? Well, th that you really, it is on you now, unfortunately. That back in the day, we had limited choices, and there was a certain level of trust. Now, maybe that trust in mainstream was, was overblown, and we shouldn't have had that much trust, mm -hmm. but it was you, that you knew where to go to get news. CNN used to be the most trusted name in news. I would argue it's almost the most, it's almost the least trusted name in yeah, news absolutely. now. The things that I see the New York Times doing, all of these things. Now I think it's on you to follow a ton of different news sources and follow things that are left and right and read. If they tell you something's happening because of Trump care or whatever they're calling it now, you gotta read a lot of articles about it. It's exhausting and it's annoying. It is, it is, it is annoying that the onus is on us now that the days of Cronkite and, and all of this are dead. Um, my first thing is that mainstream media doesn't doesn't deserve your trust, um, and uh, they they showed it as clear as the day was long in in 2012, I think, and then again in 2016, and that obviously happened with Brexit, and that happened all all this stuff. I was even reading about the Dutch election that happened yesterday, and and some stuff that's going on over there. Marie Le Pen, uh, Marine Le Pen, obviously in France. That there, did you see the interview she gave? There's a 90 second interview with this this basically telling this journalist like off in a yeah. way, of being like, we don't trust you, no one trusts you. More people uh, by polling, way more people think Donald Trump tells the truth yeah. than the media, which and Donald Trump doesn't tell the truth. So that tells you everything <laughs> you need to know about the way people feel about the media, and they have earned it. Yeah. Um, so for me, uh, I start with the wires. I go with AP and Reuters, and I and uh, and then I, I branch out from there. I actually that's what's so funny when everyone's like, "You're such a partisan." And I'm like, actually, MSNBC is the only cable news channel I watch because I don't need to know what I know. Like, what I don't need myself reaffirmed. I need to be challenged. Rachel Maddow is one of my favorite people on cable television. Yeah. Um, and I talked about Maureen Joe, my, my admiration of kind of two people from different sides of the spectrum yeah. coming together. But I love my Drudge Report, and I love my Politico, and I love The Hill, and I, you can go in a million different ways, but I don't think media bias is a problem. I think media dishonesty is the problem. You can paint uh, a picture we were talking about the Civil War. Think of Fort Sumter or something like that. Th that would be painted as two different things. Mm -hmm. uh, the Southerners might have looked at it as being like they're making a stand, right? And they're not necessarily wrong. And the Northerners might be like, that is a federal fort that they're occupying, and we're going to take it. And they're not wrong either. Right. There are biases there, but neither of them are lying. Yeah. So that's the that's the the difference. There's a difference between bias and dishonesty. Yeah, and that's where why the onus is then on you to go, all right, this is happening. I got to figure out that there are two sides to this, and, and what can, what truth can I get out of that? Um, Colin, can you speak to all your followers uh, being painted as alt right racists on forums slash Twitter, though some are trolls? Uh, much of us are level-headed. I think you've sort of ad addressed this, but even it's interesting. Even the people that are coming to your defense are now getting this. I see this happening to me. Yeah, it's, it's it's terrible, and this is the character assassination that will now go by proxy to the people that support me. Um, the, I am in no way, shape, or form alt-right. I don't understand one specific thing that I've ever said or done or feel that would put me in the in the league with a Richard Spencer. I mean, it is completely absurd. Um, and this is the new everyone's Hitler and everyone's a Nazi. The people that there are, these people haven't read a fucking book about this. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Like the, anyone who actually knows anything about Nazism or fascism is not going to go around and call you a Nazi or a fascist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, right, and right. and so so to me, um, it's the same thing I always say. Like people make fun of me sometimes because I like Ayn Rand and I like uh, Atlas Shrugged. That's a really important book to me. They assume that I'm an objectivist. I'm not. Uh, and they assume that I agree with everything she says. I don't. And if you ever ask those people that make fun of her, hey, who are the protagonists? What is the story about? Yeah, they don't even know what the word protagonist means. No. So that's a whole other problem. This, this is the thing that like, and that's the thing I was saying with like, when, with these people calling out fascism, being like, what does fascism mean? Like, what does it mean? What is, when, what, when did the Nazis come to power? I mean, you, you're such an expert on the, on the transition from Weimar Republic into Nazi Germany. What year did that happen? Yeah. You know, like, since you're such an, so these, you have to understand my friend out, you know, that asked this question, these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and they're just spraying a machine gun, trying to hurt anyone with with words, the way they do it by calling me a, a, a racist. Yeah. For a, a tweet that is sexist. Yeah. So, so if you can't look, if you can't beat somebody with facts, if you can't beat right. somebody with a breath of knowledge, the best way to do it is to silence them. Unfortunately. Uh, hey, Colin, I just want to say I appreciate how you've handled the situation, and that you'll always have my support. Excited for what's next. Okay, not a question, but that was thank nice. you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, th there's a couple other questions. People are again asking if you're going to occasionally cover video games. Mm -hmm. So I think we've 
Got that. Thank you, Colin, for sticking up for what's right and fighting the good fight. We need more people like you. I totally agree. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. Dave, you got to invite Daryl Davis. And to Colin, I hope the best for you. Keep up the great work, guys. I'm not sure who Daryl Davis is, but I'll look into it. Uh, again, uh, are you completely done covering video games? Uh, Colin, longtime listener and PSN friend, are you going on Joe Rogan's podcast? We got that yep. one. Um, Con, can Colin's next show be called "Who Took My Avocados" with Colin Moriarty? <laughs> yeah, we have a, we used to have a big avocado joke because the, the the I blamed uh, Greg for taking stealing my avocados. He did one day, and I was going to use them and eat them, and then no one would let it go. Yeah. So um, <laughs> th- th- there seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of overlap on these questions, which I appreciate. Yeah. Um, Ah, all right, so this is interesting. Dave, okay. as the traditional religious right declines in America, it seems that a post-Christian alt-right is rising. Will the left be able to deal with this evolution and have the intellectual cultural capital to deal with it? Uh, you know, one of the things that I've been saying, and I think you sort of addressed this earlier, that the Christian right in America, which gets demonized constantly, and middle America that gets demonized constantly, and then this white people being demonized constantly, and people with any sort of traditional values and all of this stuff, that they've changed a lot. And if you don't acknowledge when somebody changes, then the onus is now on you. You're, you're now the bad guy. So for example, when it comes to gay marriage, there's almost no one fighting against it. That doesn't mean that all the Christian conservatives and the evangelicals are thrilled with it, but there really is no, the, the leader of the Republican Party is Donald Trump, who is not against gay marriage, who just kept all the LGBT workplace protections in, who's friends with Peter Thiel, et cetera, yeah. and a New Yorker who was obviously around plenty of gay people. Right, a cosmopolitan um, man that, yeah. That, yeah. That. So isn't it sort of incumbent on us to then acknowledge that and be like, you know what? Some t- these people who I may disagree with on a slew mm-hmm. of things about faith and abortion and a whole lot, but actually they've moderated themselves and now it seems like it's the other guys. Yeah, they're fighting fights that don't exist. I mean, this is always the thing that when people are like, how, you know, how can you support Romney, for instance, when he is against gay marriage? And I'm like, because the fight's over, dude. Like, like I, no offense, but... He's not going to win that fight. Like, just read the tea leaves. Look around you. It's the same people that are still fighting Roe versus Wade. I'm like, newsflash. Yeah. Never going to happen. You know? Just never going to happen. I don't care who's on the Supreme Court. Like, it's just, it's, oh, it, it happened 40 plus years ago, guys. Yeah. It's, the, the, the fight, like, if there are states' rights issues there or all those kinds of things that people want to talk about, I think that's fine. But these people are, like, wanting to fight fights that you already won. Yeah. Well, also, people don't understand that if Roe v. Wade is flipped, it doesn't make abortion illegal. It kicks it back to the state. Exactly. I think that potentially could happen. If you had enough strict constitutionalists, I think that I wouldn't want that to happen, even though Me I'm neither. a states' rights guy. Uh, but I think that potentially could happen. But most of the people screaming about it think that it's about the legality of abortion, which it's well, not. Well, because they don't pick up books. But here's the thing. Here's the thing about about that. And I agree with you. I want to clarify that I agree with you as yeah. well. If, I hope it doesn't happen either. It's the same reason why, even though I believe in a small federal government, when the federal government said gay marriage is legal, I'm like, well, that's inherently discriminatory. It should it should come from the federal government. It's the same argument that Goldwater had versus LBJ in the guy in, in 1964 with the Civil Rights Act, like. Could this solve itself, or will we solve it for, for them? And yeah. you solve it for them because there's no time to let it solve itself. And by the way, doesn't that sort of show that some that we're all sort of inconsistent ideologically a little bit? So I'm sure there would somebody here you'd say that, and there's somebody out there that would be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're a small government guy, you're a libertarian, blah, blah, blah. It should have nothing to do with the government. The government shouldn't even give these rights. But you're saying there are cases where you're admitting that you don't have the answers to everything. There are cases that maybe a real world that can veer off the ideological path. Yeah, if the, if, the, if the ground is even, then the government only needs to protect the evenness of the ground. It doesn't need to protect your individual rights. The individual rights are natural. But if the, if the ground is uneven for certain people, then it needs to be evened out. That's just the way it is. Like, otherwise, you, don't ha- you can't have a libertarian society in which things are uneven. Yeah. So it, it, to me, it's totally compatible, but I'm also not trying to fit an or, like a, a purity test either. Absolutely. Um, this is a great question, and I think about this a lot. Colin and Dave, what are your thoughts on using civil suits to bring some accountability to these journalists? So people know I'm a free speech absolutist, except for a direct call to violence, you can say whatever the hell you want. But what about this when it comes to libel? I'm actually for libel uh, laws, and when Peter mm-hmm. Thiel took down Gawker after all of the god-awful, horrible stuff that they did, I had no problem with that. What, what do you think about it? As someone that just suffered from this, right. being called a racist in a right. mainstream Yeah, uh, I, I, I think, uh, I think um, you have to have protections against slander and libel, and libel obviously being the written word, what we're talking about. Um, I don't think it should be used as a bludgeon um, to say things uh, if people have an opinion, but when they're a character assassinating you or saying things that are untrue or false um, and defamatory, that's different. You should be protected from those kinds of things, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think some countries like England have 
uh, way, way, way more strict libel laws and all that I think are kind of scary. But you should be able to protect yourself. You should a newspaper shouldn't be able to just write whatever they want. Right. Um, and so I think that that's a that's a worthwhile protection to explore. And and Gawker was a fucking disaster, and they they ruined people. Yeah. This goes back to it, like. What what did that guy from Condé Nast do to anyone? When for people that aren't familiar, the, yeah. the, this this random writer just outs the CFO of Condé Nast, ruins his marriage, outs him as a gay man, uh, which is a a personal a fucking personal thing, as you know. Yeah. Uh, and 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 destroyed him. Yeah. What did he do? That's not acceptable. Yeah. What did Hulk Hogan? Hulk, because Hulk Hogan's a, a public figure, his sex tape should be should be leaked. There has to be, there's no decency. Why is it so personal? Yeah, I think we're actually bringing decency back now. I think people have had it. People have had it. Why did Gawker out Peter Thiel? Yeah, it, because he's an enemy. Because he's the enemy. Because Peter Thiel's a conservative. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, but Peter Thiel has, has the last laugh, of course. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Colin, how do you think making a joke in the middle of the social media circles surrounding International Women's Day affected the backlash. I'm not quite sure I understand. No, I think what he's saying is that if the joke wasn't told that day, could it would it oh. have been? Uh, my my answer is that the joke would have been irrelevant if it wasn't told that day. That was the entire idea. <laughs> was, yeah. You know, uh, you know, I, you know, if you want to march in the street, that's totally fine. I'm still of the mind that I can't think of a single right that a man has in the United States that a woman doesn't. But um, march away if that's what makes you happy. But the joke wouldn't have. The joke wouldn't have worked um, if if not for that day. Like if I just said that. It would be a, like, whatever, right. what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, a couple people would have got on it, and, yeah. and that would have been that. Um, this is interesting. Colin, do you, does this experience change your view of Milo, Trump, Gamergate, et cetera, which you weren't big fans of? Does it give you a better view of Trump in the media? It, this general theme has pushed me in, in that way more, because now I see the corruption mm -hmm. so obviously. When I saw that International Business Times thing, it was like, holy shit. Like, I knew 100% what the truth was, and it had nothing to do with that headline, and that is a theme with all of these things. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, and you and I discussed it a little bit privately too in the sense that, you know, my stance is, um, do I understand Trump more? Yes. Um, I also think that Trump brought it on himself in a, lot, in a way, so I, I, my sympathy for him is low. Um, but I understand the idea that, well, it's a boy who cried wolf in a reverse situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talk about the boy who cried wolf where it's like fascism, fascism, fascism. They're like, what if fascism you know, co really comes to America? No one's going to listen. It's the same Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Romney's a Nazi. McCain's a Nazi. Blah, blah, blah. There's that. But Trump lies over and over again and then expects to be taken seriously. And so it's a little bit of a different story. But I sympathize with that because he has no effective way to tell his message. But he kind of brought that on a problem himself. Milo... Uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, I don't know personally, uh, but I've watched a lot of his things. Uh, I agree with some of the things he says. He, he's, you know, he's right about some of the things he says, but I don't, I don't like mean spiritedness. Mm -hmm. That's just not who I am. If that's your message and that's the way you want to do, if you want to be a, what he would call himself as a provocateur, that's not who I am. Um, so that the, the message, the way the message is delivered, matters to me, and that so. Um, you know, I've always I've always thought he had some interesting things to say. I disagree vehemently with other things he says, um, but I don't like the delivery. Uh, in that sense. Uh, Gamergate, um, I watched happen um, in my own industry as it was, as it was raging. And um, I, again, it goes back to mean-spiritedness. It goes back to uh, character assassinations and, and, and making things very personal. And I just, the message to me is lost. Your message is lost when that's your tactic. I just, it just doesn't resonate with me. So it doesn't matter what people feel like Gamergate was about because it really was, um, and I've said it before on your show, both sides, it's not one side or the other. I hate both extremes yeah. in every situation there's no need for that these people aren't revolutionaries not like it, it, it's we're talking about feminism we're talking about video games <laughs> you know the one thing that got me with gamergate that i thought was annoying was this idea that there's collusion and there's it's it's not true like i, I was a senior editor of the biggest video game website in the world you know uh if people were getting bought off for reviews and stuff like that i know yeah and i'm telling you right now that doesn't happen uh the the the, the biggest um the biggest uh thing that happened that I know of when I was in the industry was the thing with Jeff Gerstman, who used to work at GameSpot, when he was fired for giving a bad review. It wasn't even that he, someone asked him to give a review. The marketers or the salespeople there had a conflict of interest with all this kind of stuff, and they fired him. And that was terrible, and that's wrong. Um, but you know, in defense of the journalists out there and the people that are doing this work, I can't speak for everyone, but I can speak for the biggest gaming website in the world. Yeah. Didn't happen. 
I was uh, in Nintendo Power Magazine in about 1989 or so, because I beat Adventure of Link, which we talked about right. a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I got the game very early somehow. It was like accidentally sold at a store near my grandma's, and I beat it before most people even had it. My brother and I took a picture, and we made it to Nintendo Power That's Magazine. That's awesome. Pretty you much. have it still? It's in the other room. That's awesome. I love that. It's in the other room. That's fantastic. Uh, all right. So here's what we're going to do. I, I know we, we could do this clearly mm -hmm. all day. We could literally sit here for 24 straight hours and people would keep doing this and keep asking us things. And even if they weren't, we could figure out things to talk about. Sure. Why don't, w let's say we'll do this for another 15 minutes. Sure. Whatever you want, We'll, we'll go 15 minutes. So if you guys want to jump in on, on the Super Chat for about 15 minutes more and then we'll then we'll wrap it up. Uh, we got we got lives outside of yeah, this yeah. too, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, I've uh, occupied enough of your time. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, no. That's... All right, uh, what motivates lynching? What motivates public figure sacrifices? What ideas do they want to crucify? Why is this sac sacrificial behavior occurring in our modern society? I mean, I think we've been sort of discussing this, that if you don't have ideas, if you don't have really good ideas, the best way to beat your intellectual enemies is to just destroy them. Right, I, I think that you know the evolution, when you know we use the term witch hunt, um, it's not really like the witch hunting that was going on in the in the in the 17th and 18th centuries in Salem, for instance. Yeah. Um, in the sense that they were that was all propagated by not understanding, by fear, by by othering someone, and that they, there's overlap there. Yeah. There probably are a couple of people who want to put you on a stick and dip you in the water. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? Yeah, drown yeah, drown them. Yeah. Um, but today, I feel like it's just it's just it's it's a it's a scary mod mentality that is driven largely by an, an, anonymity. I can never say that word. Uh, largely driven by this need to be right, um, and this the, driven by by uh, a level of mean spiritedness. You have to have to to be able to do this to someone, to be able to go after someone to the level that people have gone after me, to be able to go after people, you know, to go after someone the way they go after others. You have to have a level of mean spiritedness in you. Like there's, I don't know that I'd be able to do it. Like to be perfectly honest, like uh, yeah. I, I just. I just even unless someone was like so beyond the pale. Yeah. I don't know that I'd be able to dogpile to the extent where I would have where I would look at someone being fired, for instance, as a victory. Um, you know, I always a good example, I can't remember the gentleman's name. He was one of the founders of uh, Firefox, uh, Mozilla. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. And he had the audacity, the fucking audacity, to donate money to a pro traditional marriage cause. Now, I don't believe in that cause. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of money, but No, it, it wasn't. Yeah, it was like 250 bucks, I think, or something. But the audaciousness of being able to do that, oh no. But if you talk to people there, like he hired gay people, he had a very diverse staff, he never, there's no case of him ever treating anyone with disrespect. They fucking destroyed him. Yeah. And I look at that and I'm like, Jesus, God, why? What did that man do? You know, like, I know people that are pro-traditional uh, marriage, they don't necessarily hate gay people because of that. They might be religious. They might do all those kinds of things. I look at that when I see things like this. I'm like, how do you, how can you live in a world where you don't know anyone that voted for Trump? How can you live in a world where you don't love someone that voted for Trump? How can you live in a world where you don't know anybody that's against gay marriage? That you don't know anyone that is pro-life? That you don't know? It's like get a goddamn grip, dude. You know, like these people. And these are the supposed tolerant people. Yeah, these that's are the very the tolerant irony. people. Meanwhile, this person over here is just like. I'm pro-life, and that's that's my stance. And I'm like, I respect that stance. I've always called uh, the pro-life argument a 60-40 thing. I'm pro-choice, but it's a 60-40 argument. I'm like, very tough, yeah. very tough. But as I said, I was only pro-choice when I had conversations in college that changed my mind, which is why you need to explore this. I was vehemently pro-life until I was not. And uh, once, and I was, I, you reflected, and I'm like, I was wrong. I, I see the other side. Um, and so this, this, this level of mean spiritedness, this orthodoxy that people are obsessed with, that's what I was talking about at the top, Dave, where I was saying, we actually align 90% of the way. Why do you hate me? What did I do? Because I believe in low taxes or a small government? Yeah. Uh, horror. What do you think yeah. about just the getting off on it? That's what I think, even more than the ideological part of it, like people trying to beat you, ide yeah, they can't beat you ideologically, so they just say these mean things, but that there's some other piece of it. That that the the people that are the true trolls that don't that the second you post a video automatically comment something horrible and upvote all horrible right. things and fight with everybody and all that it has nothing to do with even the politics of it or the ideology it's just this personal sort of like I'm getting off on just mm. destroying shit yeah and and it, and it says it, it goes back to your point too about there has to be a level of cognitive dissonance there in the sense that you don't think that this canon can be turned on you 
you better be very fucking careful. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's why I don't partic participate in witch hunts because I didn't want to become a victim of one and, and it didn't matter anyway, so. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Dave, first off, love the show and your commentary is always insightful. Thank you. Uh, both sides have truth in their arguments and how possible is it to really reach that shared truth? Why are moderates on both sides not working together? Well, I mean, we've been talking about this the whole time, but I think moderates are, and I think we just have to consistently show that you can sit down with people that you disagree with. I've had many people in that chair, in my own home where this studio is, who are not for gay marriage. Yeah. Uh, when I had Bishop Barron on, who obviously from the Archdiocese of LA, come in here and he's not for gay marriage, I didn't feel the need, did I really think I was gonna get by the end of it, I could convince this bishop to announce on air and have a mea culpa, you know yeah. what, I'm for gay marriage. Of course not, but you have your beliefs, I don't like them, but I let people hear what he had to say. And, and isn't it interesting to, I thought that I thought that interview was fascinating, I thought he was a really interesting man, I actually no. tweeted at him, I was like, that was a very interesting conversation because isn't it, isn't it interesting to see the principles of another person and to understand how they might have approached that? And I thought his, his, I don't agree with his reasoning like you, but I thought it was interesting. I never heard even some of the arguments he was saying. I was like, well, that's, that's, re that's revelatory to me. I had no idea. So now when I go to the next conversation about it, I have, I'm equipped with a different way of looking at things that might allow me to, to, to disassemble the idea a little bit further. You, these people would never even expose themselves to that kind of idea. And, and he that, didn't seem like a bad man either. No, you know, and that's the irony. You know, he actually got a lot of shit for coming on the show because at one point, I got him to say something to the effect of that his head and his heart aren't at quite the same place, which a lot of people, more uh, conservative people than him, took as, oh, he might be for gay marriage. Right. And then he was getting crucified, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, he was getting crucified in, in Christian blogs as saying that he was for gay marriage or something. And then he had to issue a statement after that and then at the same time, I was getting attacked by people on the other side, the extremists on the other side, saying, how could you sit with him? How come you didn't lambast him and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, man, you guys, it's that horseshoe thing. You guys are actually yeah. the same. And think about it, think about it just so real quick. I'm sorry to yeah. but think about it in this way, because the horseshoe, if, you know, for people that don't know, the, the idea of you get so, so far to the extreme that you become what you hate. Um, which is a political, a political, not, a political 101 idea that is indisputable in yeah. my mind. Um, but the, 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 I really believe, and this is what I touched on before, I really believe that people are fucking over it. That it's really, that we are at this massive inflection point. We've had third party candidates in the past that have had varying success, right? Teddy Roosevelt ran Bull Moose against Taft and Wilson in 1912 and ruined, and, and that's why we got Wilson, but he had a lot of vote. Uh, you know, uh, Perot, obviously all these people. But we're going to get a middle of the road candidate that is going to start peeling away votes from these parties to such a degree that it is gonna become the new normal. Um, and that the far regressive left, which I find a complete embarrassment, and this alt-right kind of movement, which is also an, it's an embarrassment in its own way, need to be cast aside so people, you know, normal conservatives, liberals, moderates, lots of common ground, lots and lots of it. But we have to get rid of these elements that make it seem like it's not, it's the same way with the alt-right, that the horrible had what? Uh, 200 people at it. There yeah. are 4,000 people in the KKK. <laughs> there are 300. But the media keeps making it sound like right. there's tons of them because they need this imaginary enemy. So when Hillary did that thing talking about Breitbart and quoting Milo articles, mm -hmm. titles of Milo things, and talking about deplorables, she strengthened them as opposed to just saying what you believe. You actually strengthen the very people that you're supposed to be against. Yeah, it's 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 strange, and and it's so it's just so bizarre. Like, and it's. It's, the system's already eating itself, and I really do believe a Mark Cuban or a Mark Zuckerberg or some someone. What about a Colin Moriarty? A Colin, I mean, what about, a, what about a Ruben Moriarty or Moriarty Ruben 2020? I just. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'm just getting into the video games again. Yeah, the, the other thing is we don't bring regional balance, which is a huge problem on the ticket. We're both from the, literally the do, same part of the same state. We would kill it in Nassau and Suffolk, <laughs> that, that's for sure. Uh, Colin, your voice is invaluable. I'm watching this instead of Colin and Greg live. How? public do you think you'll be moving forward and how important do you feel it is to be public with your stances? Again, this is sort of- Yeah, I'll be very public and uh, you can you have not heard the last of me and, and I, I hope that I can count on you guys to support me. Um, it is going to be uh, very soon. Uh, Colin, just curious, have you ever read any Austrian economists, Moses Hayek, Rothbard, etc.? Yeah, not, not deeply. Um, I'm fascinated by economics and I have my own economic theories, um, but in terms of um, political theory, uh, wonkishness, as it were, um, or policy. Uh, I've never fallen super far down the economic pit. Um, 
it, it goes back to the idea that I, I have a lot to learn there. And I think I take a lot from that school and, and others in the sense that like, people are confused about like, how can you call yourself a free marketeer but also a protectionist? And I'm like, well, I believe in free domestic markets. But I also think that if you're going to have an inflated currency and trade things and, and there's an imbalance, that that should be protected. That, that protects our free market, mm -hmm. you know, like not the global free market. I don't believe in the glo this massive globalization. So I also believe in the, in the idea that no one really understands the economy. Yeah. Um, so there's, a, there, there, there's been a couple themes here, and it's mostly related to obviously free speech and people figuring out the middle thing, and also uh, you know what can what can they do? They feel silenced, and how can they get the sort I guess the balls to kind of do what you're doing uh, in their own life? Um, but but the other one that a lot of people are asking about one way or another is just what is your relationship with the kind of funny guys right now? And I think you kind of hinted at it, but if, if you just want to explain. Yeah, it yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, we'll always be friends. I mean, we have significant disagreements, and I don't want to get into the behind the scenes things of what happened and all that. I don't think that's my story to tell alone. Um, maybe if they want to tell that story with me one day, we will. Um, I'd be happy to have everybody right here, and I'll even get out of the way yeah. if you just want to. Well, you don't need my studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to do it on, on, you know, neutral ground or whatever. I, I'll say this I want them to succeed, and I don't want to be a distraction. Uh, to them anymore. I wish them the very best. I'll keep the personal things between us. Um, and uh, I've known them too long, specifically Nick and Greg, who I've known for 10 years. I mean, I've known these guys, those two guys, for a very, very long time. And um, I would never want them to fail. Uh, and I would never want them to not find what they're looking for as well. And that was part of the reason why I resigned. That's fair. Uh, this is good because it gets to another Long Islander. Uh, Colin, you've recently discussed watching and listening to Howard Stern. Has Howard affected you the way you view free speech on the radio or otherwise? Real quick, I, you know, I was a former Sirius XM guy and mm. I would see him occasionally and unfortunately we've never, we've never met and I would love to get on the show, but I, I am such a huge admirer of his and he is everything that's right about free speech yep. and being able to say crazy shit. And did you know that during the election that uh, people were demanding that he release tapes yeah. of Trump? Yeah. And he said, and I'm he not going to do it because he came on my show within the scope of what the show is to have fun and say crazy things. And all I would be doing, I'd be throwing myself under the bus. And all future guests and, and, and open it. It's about giving an inch. I respected that so much, Dave. Like when he, they're like, oh, and they did find some things, but it's like, yeah. I respected that so much because it's like, yeah, he can make a big deal about it. And he didn't support their, their personal friends. Um, he supported, he was a huge Clinton supporter. Uh, I'll answer this. First of all, uh, the pride of Roosevelt, Long Island, uh, that's where he comes from. Uh, Howard Stern is a Long Islander like us, and we love him for that because uh, we stick together, just like Jerry Seinfeld and all the others. But uh, he, I've always liked him. My old roommate, Scott, um, was a huge Howard Stern fan. I used to watch him on E sometimes when I was a kid, and I, you know, tangentially, you know, he's a funny guy, and Robin, and all, you know. He had Howard TV in when, every day during dinner. When we get home, we'd watch it together, and I was like, this guy's fucking awesome. This is so funny. It's so inappropriate. It's so over the top, you know? He Having, might have once said a thing about a woman and talking, and... Uh, my God! Oh my! I How mean, did they not kick him off? I know. I, I mean, like the thing, and you know, my girlfriend and I, in the last couple of months, have fallen down the rabbit hole. I mean, we watch hours, sometimes a day, of yeah. Howard Stern just on YouTube, just anything we can find, because he's such a great inspiration. He shows why you need people like him. You need to have a guy that's willing to cross the line so significantly that you know where the line is, and that also he's not doing it with disrespect. I don't think either. I think he's doing it just to be funny, to just see what he can get away with. It's, he's such a fascinating man and such an important figure um, in that way. And so, yes, he has inspired me and influenced me to a massive degree. Yeah, well, I suspect you'll be on Howard Stern. And I said to you last night, I have a feeling you're also going to get on real time uh, with Bill That Maher. would be amazing. Before, before I do, and you're what, probably the only the person that I would be okay if that happens before <laughs> Thank you so I get much. on there. Um, look, we could, do this, we could do this the rest of the day, and, and people would keep asking questions and all that stuff. Um, but I think that we did something real here. Uh, we're gonna figure out other ways to collaborate. Yep. Uh, you're gonna have several announcements really soon that are gonna, uh, I think, be huge. And uh, I, I'm glad we're in the loop. And yeah, I, I owe you. You know, you, you owe got, me nothing. Uh, but you owe me nothing. I know you get so, so tired of it. You I, brought I, two big bottles of bourbon. I did. I brought some bourbon for you. My yeah. girlfriend brought you a nice candle that they, the TSA had a <laughs> molest before they let it go through. Apparently, the candle you brought could have been construed as a bomb. Right. Turns out, not a bomb. I even lit it to check. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I, I, I warned you against lighting the bomb, but you did it anyway. Yeah. Um, you, Mira, David, have been so good to me, and you have a lifelong 
ally. I will always have your back, Dave Rubin. So thank you so much for what you've done for me. And I will continue to support you in any way I can. You, you tell me you need me down here. I'm here like that. So you, so, you know, I have a little yard work there. Yeah, yeah I'll, 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 I'll weed whack and do all that. I was a landscaper in college. Oh, there you go. Uh, right. But uh, you, you, have, you have earned in me the utmost loyalty. And no one will ever besmirch you in front of me and, and get away with it. Well, I appreciate that. I feel the same way. You put your neck out there. I need allies, you know what I mean? Like this isn't, this is also self-preservation. You know what I mean? Sure. You're doing something that you believe in, that you're passionate about, that is real, and at the same time, it also serves what I think is the greater good, ironically, by serving yourself, by being an individual, you're actually serving the, the greater good, which that's how it's supposed to be. And uh, th this is just the beginning for us. So anyway, uh, Colin's gonna have all sorts of announcements. I will promote the hell out of them. We'll, I'll do a little video on them here and we'll do stuff on Facebook and YouTube and all that good stuff. And we will continue. Thank you guys for, for joining us for this. You wanna say anything directly to, to uh, the people or did uh, we? Yeah, sure, did we I just wanna thank everybody. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, thank you, thousands and thousands and thousands of you have reached out to me in support. I hope I can count on you to support me on what's next. Um, and uh, keep up the good fight. Like you said, it's a, an army of individuals and uh, we'll fight this collectivist, destructive, uh, mean-spiritedness uh, one person at a time. And so I thank all of you out there. Thank you so much. On that note, we did this without even having breakfast and it's past lunchtime, so let's get some food. Absolutely. All right, thank you guys.